Good morning everyone, welcome along. Welcome to the west coast of Australia. Beautiful hollow day, beautiful Cottesloe beach on a rainy day. Happy Halloween to you all. Hello Bassmaster. Morning. <laughs> Lovely to have you all along. Just watching the surf lifesavers at Cottesloe go through their motions. Beautiful day here, rainy day. We really need the rain on the west coast of Australia. We're in drought conditions. So sorry I won't be able to zoom in today, folks, uh, because I'm holding the camera with one hand and my umbrella with the other. So uh, we'll just go for a walk on Cottesloe Beach. And this is it. That's the Cottesloe Surf Life Saving Club. Beautiful Art Deco building swinging around the Cottesloe groin there and uh, in the surf are all the Cottesloe Surf Life Saving Club uh, members going through their um, motions, their training and you've got the shark net out there surrounding Cottesloe Beach area here protect us from the great whites let's go let's go have a look shall we couldn't resist coming out on a rainy day I'm holding an umbrella with one hand and uh, my phone with the other so bear with me I might make a few uh, technical errors like that with the umbrella going in front but great to have you all along If you're new to my broadcast, I've got location on, you'll be able to... Is it warm rain? Well, it's about uh, 16 degrees Celsius, so, you know, around 60 Fahrenheit. <coughs> so it's not, not sort of warm. Uh, if you're asking if the rain itself is warm, uh, I'm under an umbrella, so I'm not actually feeling the rain on me. Um, but uh, it's not freezing cold. But it's Sunday morning here, which is the morning when the uh, lifesavers uh, come down and do their training. Saturday and Sunday morning, and we've got the masters there, the older guys, about to go for a uh, plunge in the ocean, the Indian Ocean. So if you're new to my scopes, folks, I've got the uh, location on. So if you click on the little androgynous person in the bottom right hand corner of your screen with the numbers next to it, you'll see it goes straight to a map. If you're using an Android, click on the three dots on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, click on broadcast details and you'll see a map. So there they go folks. The masters, Surf Life Saving Club guys who have been around forever, heading out for a swim. Excellent. And look, here's all the surf life savers over here, all gathering under the uh, building here, protecting themselves from the rain. Got the club in there with all the uh, surf life saving boats and uh, gear. So let's go down to the beach, folks, and have a bit of a wander around. I'm not used to scoping in the rain, folks, so bear with me. I'll probably make a few technical errors. So let me show you the shark, uh, the shark proof barrier here. Look at that, large crowd over here. Let me show you the shark proof barrier. Thanks for those beautiful hearts, they're really appreciated. So this is the shark netting. Um, it's quite rigid. It's, um, it's made of um, steel, steel bars. 
uh, with rubber coating, rubber uh, wrap around with those floats with its chain on the bottom. You can see the chain there. And it extends out to the Cottesloe pile on there and wraps around going over to the Cottesloe groin there. That's the Cottesloe groin, G-R-O-Y-N-E, groin. Another name for a kind of breakwater, I guess you'd say. Welcome everyone on your first day. Beautiful here, I've got my feet in the water. Water's quite warm, around about 18 degrees Celsius. Uh, probably about 68 Fahrenheit. But lovely walking in the rain down here on Cottesloe Beach, folks. Just watching the masters here. I think these guys are over 60. Sacramento, California. Welcome along. Happy Halloween to you. We're on All Saints Day now. We've had Halloween last night. All Saints Day. So these are the masters. The guys, I think, over 55 or over 60, maybe been in the surf life saving club since they were nippers that's the junior surf life savers and look at that yeah that's the Cottesloe surf life saving club beautiful art deco building here they go the masters having their morning swim Full moon, wow, fantastic. I hope you scope it. Sorry I can't zoom in today, folks, as I'm holding the camera with one hand and uh, my umbrella with the other, so the camera doesn't get wet. Masters swimmers, folks, the guys over 55 maybe. Still in good shape, most of them. Quite a nice swell today. This is not a renowned surfing beach. This is more a family style of beach. The surfing beach is to the right of screen um, at Scarborough Beach and Trig. Fantastic. Just gotta make an adjustment, folks. My pants are falling down, so I've got to hoist up the old uh, shorts. There we go. And there's the masters, all the older guys from the Cottesloe Surf Life Saving Club, all doing well. <laughs> Fabulous. And that's the Surf Life Saving Clubhouse. Magnificent Art Deco building built in the early 1900s. Got Indiana's tea rooms upstairs, a restaurant and bar. It's great, isn't it? So if you're new to my scopes, click on the little person in the bottom right hand corner of your screen and you'll go straight to a map. If you've got an Android, click on the three dots at the bottom right hand corner of the screen, then click on broadcast details and you'll see exactly where I am. I'm the red dot, the moving red dot on the west coast of Australia.
Hope you can hear the sound of the waves okay. Not too much wind, which is why I came out. If it was windy and rainy, I wouldn't have come, but uh, I wouldn't, wouldn't have been able to hold an umbrella. But being as how it's not very windy, it's only a light wind, um, it's pretty much okay. The scoping. So there we are, folks. I'm in the water. Beautiful. Where do I live? I live at Fremantle, which is about uh, 10 k's that way. That's due south. Fremantle's a, a busy working harbour. Looks and sounds good. That's great. Fremantle's a busy working harbour. Um, it's the harbour town of Perth, and Perth's the capital city of West Australia. Uh, Perth's tw uh, 20 kilometres to the left of screen, due east from here. Like I say, I've got the map on, so if you click on the broadcast details, you'll see the map. And if you've got an iPhone, you can zoom in and zoom out by pinching and reverse pinching. So we've got the nippers down here. The nippers are the, um, the junior surf, surf lifesavers, usually under 12s. They're going through their paces here. You have silver coins from the Perth Mint. Fantastic. Sweep the leg. Sweep the leg. <laughs> Great name. Sweep the leg. Uh, just uh, be cautious about filming the uh, nippers here because, uh, you know, they're uh, underage kids and they may not want me filming them. But it's a public event, so it should be okay. See them going through their paces. Doing a swim around. How cold is the water? Water is about 18 degrees Celsius which is probably about 65, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. Little colder than what you're used to in the United States, um, but it's what we're used to here. I'll just swing around, I'll ask permission if I can film them. Excuse me sir, is it okay if I film the uh, kids doing their event? Yeah. Uh, oh, they just have to just practice. Just practice, but they don't mind if I film? Oh. What would you say? Probably not okay, alright, alright, yeah. No, he's saying probably not probably not film the kids, okay? I'll just film from a distance. See the parents up here? The kids going... can see them close away. Yeah, that's good. Great. I can't zoom in because I've only got one hand because one hand is holding this umbrella. <laughs> so they're just going through training, it's not an actual event, but uh, looks like a lot of fun. It's nice and colourful with their blue um, caps on and the uh, helpers with their green rashies or water, sh water shirts. Beautiful sound of the ocean, the Indian Ocean here, folks. 
So I'll take you out onto the Cottesloe groin up here. We'll see if there's anyone surfing on the other side. See, everyone's got their umbrellas out. We need the rain, folks. We're just out of winter. Um, and uh, so uh, we haven't had our quota of rain over the winter. So uh, this rain is really appreciated. Spring rain. So we'll go up on the groin here so you can uh, get a view of, uh, get your uh, orientation of where we are. And I'll explain a little bit when we get out on the groin. The uh, surf life saving flags in Australia are always red and yellow. So that's a uniform all over West Australia, the red, all over Australia, I mean the red and yellow flags. And you're asked to swim between the red and yellow flags. It's only one today because it's not exactly swimming conditions. So that's looking due south. You might be able to just make out Fremantle in the background there. That's the harbour of Fremantle. You can see the Star Wars figures there, the cranes that lift the containers off the ships. Not many people surfing today. I thought there would be quite a few people surfing over the reef here, but uh, not so. And in the centre of screen there is Australia's largest working sundial. I'll take you over there in a moment. See, we won't be able to read the time because the sun is obscured by all the cloud. But let's walk out on the Cottesloe gro groin, folks. Let's check it out. Looking beautiful today. So glad I decided to come for a walk in the rain. Normally when it's raining like this, it'd be windy as well, so I wouldn't be able to scope. Um, but uh, since there's not too much wind, it's great for scoping. You can see the shark barrier there with the yellow floats. There we are, the shark barrier wrapping around there, protecting people from sharks. A few people swimming there. Sorry, I can't zoom in because I've only got one hand, like I say. So uh, this is Cottesloe Beach here. That's looking due north up to Scarborough Beach in Indonesia. Um, swinging around. That's the Cottesloe Surf Life Saving Club there. Beautiful Art Deco building. How far below surface is the barrier? Excellent question. I haven't actually swum down to the bottom of it, um, but I'd say that was about three meters of water there, three to four meters. 
So I'm guessing it goes all the way, so three to four meters in that part there, in the deepest part. But it's a good question and I'll have to go uh, get my goggles on and go for a dive down there and have a look. Um, probably not today, but another time. Just let me hitch up my shorts, folks. Wardrobe malfunction. Well, I, I've got no hands, one hand holding the phone, the other hol holding an umbrella. Um, my shorts are falling down. <laughs> Do sharks ever get near, uh, get near the barrier? Well, the barrier's only been up since the 1st of October, so a month now. So um, it's the 1st of November today, so pinch and a punch for the 1st of the month. Um, uh, so uh, there hasn't been any sharks sighted that I'm aware of uh, since the barrier's been up. Um, yeah, they don't keep the barrier up here over winter because it gets too rough and there's not so much the call for it um, because uh, not so many people swimming. Mind you, people still do swim all winter here. I call them the icebergs, the people who come down every, every day of the year for a swim at dawn. surf life saving dinghy there collecting the floats from their swim around beautiful it's great to be out in these conditions it's really nice happy that I came for a Sunday morning walk Oh look, he's going over the uh, over the shark net. He's got an outboard. Must have lifted it to, uh, to get over there. I'm guessing. Just going for a bit of a spin, I think. A friend lives on the coast of Perth. That's great. Well, that's where we are now. Cottesso is probably the main sort of tourist beach. Look, they're just taking a little spin, young guys. Doing a few donuts in the surf life saving dinghy. They'll probably get into trouble for that. <laughs> nice. So there's two people swimming out there, I can see. I don't know if you can make them out. They're quite a way back, uh, right over on the northern end of the uh, shark barrier. And one surfer on the other side there, I see. Okay, so we're gonna resume the walk, folks. We'll take a bit of a walk and see what's going on. Beautiful dog. This is a nice fishing spot out here. You uh, throw your line into deep water there. Out the end there or out here. Lots of uh, fish to be caught here. It's quite a popular fishing spot. Uh, the country, West Australia, the state that I'm in now is closed. Uh, our borders are opening up on the 15th of November. So in two weeks time. Um, or 14th of November so um, yeah the whole the country of Australia is still closed to uh, tourists um, and West Australia we've had no community transmission of COVID for uh, six months now so um, we've had excellent management of the COVID situation so we're pretty much COVID free in the community the only people with COVID uh, in West Australia are Australians who've returned from overseas and they have to go into two weeks quarantine in a hotel in a quarantine hotel and they have to pay for it themselves so it costs them about three thousand dollars if they're returning to Perth or returning to West Australia from overseas but we've got no community transmission and we've had no community transmission for six months. Yeah, it's because of good management. We locked down the state in early March. Uh, we went into total isolation, closed all businesses apart from essential businesses. And we were not allowed to leave our homes apart from to do food shopping and to get medicinal supplies. So um, 
you know, it was a very strict lockdown, but it was very effective and it worked, you know, because we just haven't had any community transmission at all for, like I say, six months. So it's a pretty amazing job our, our head of government has done. Our, we call him a premier, the premier, it's sort of like your version of a governor in the United States. But our Premier used to be a, uh, is an old Navy person. He was a lawyer in the Navy and he locked us down in a really military style of fashion and uh, prevented us from uh, getting a kind of an out of control spread of COVID, which was fantastic. So normally this guy is surfing on this break here. It's a reef break, as you can see, but uh, not many people surfing today. I can see three out there. Six months is a long time, yeah? We, we weren't, we're not locked down for six months. We've been out of lockdown, I don't know, probably for five months. Yeah, so uh, yeah, all the businesses are open. We can have sporting events. We can go to movie theaters. We can go to restaurants and bars. Uh, sporting events, the biggest sporting event we've had since COVID has been 30,000 people. That's half capacity in our Perth Stadium. So, uh, you know, we've managed COVID incredibly well here. Please feel free to ask questions about it if you've got any questions on uh, how well we managed COVID due to our uh, military style um, head of government here which has been fantastic and we really appreciate him. So there's some of the fish that are around here. I can't zoom in folks, so uh, you can just get an idea of the species of fish that are in the waters right off here. Lots of variety of fish there. I love this rocky coastline here. That's all limestone. It's appropriate for Halloween. It's uh, how did the government get people to agree to shut down? It didn't get them to agree. It was compulsory. Compulsory shutdown. The only places that were open were, sh you know, food, uh, food shops and um, uh, chemists, pharmacies. So, um, oh, and I think the booze shops were open, so you could go and buy your booze if you wanted to. It wasn't a, we didn't have a choice, it was compulsory. Like I say, he was a lawyer in the Navy and uh, he took the whole COVID pandemic incredibly seriously and shut us all down. You know, we were only in lockdown and in isolation for probably, I don't know, I can't remember whether it was six weeks or Church is all closed, yeah. How long was the complete shutdown? Um, probably about two months, but we were in forced isolation, only allowed out for food shopping and uh, med medicinal supplies for about six weeks. And it gradually opened up. I can't remember exactly whether it was two or three months of lockdown, but... Um, yeah, so we're looking at Fremantle Harbour down there, a busy working harbour. That's where I live in Fremantle. You can see the Star Wars figures, the orange dinosaurs, the cranes that lift the containers off the ships. And that's due south down there, swinging around to due west. Rottnest Island is out there 20 kilometres. You can't see it out there at the moment because of the rain swinging around that's due north yeah contact yeah contract contact tracing was um yeah 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 was really enforced yeah so uh and people were encouraged to get the app on your phone that showed if you were um in contact with uh someone who had covid but we had so few cases of community in the community itself you know, all the cases were Australians returning from overseas. So history of the Aboriginal uh, settlement here, part of the Wad Wadjuk trails, the local indigenous First Nations people with a, with a Wadjuk Noongar people, Wadjuk Noongar. 
and they lived here for approximately 60,000 years, which is a heck of a long time. Yeah, a great job on the COVID. I mean, people were critical because a lot of businesses lost a lot of money. But, uh, you know, in general, our economy grew by one and a half percent over the six months of COVID, uh, six or seven months of since COVID arrived. So we didn't lose out. The economy grew mainly through iron ore. We've got vast uh, stocks of iron ore that we sell off, um, you know, mostly to China, interestingly. So our economy hasn't suffered. We're not in recession. So look, the beach is virtually deserted again now. Sorry, I can't zoom in. I would normally zoom in and show you around, but I'm holding this umbrella with one hand. So we'll go upstairs and I'm going to take you down to the sand, uh, to the sundial. I'll show you the sundial up here. Australia's largest working sundial. I'm not sure uh, what's Australia's largest non-working sundial, but... (laughs) These areas are normally, in in this time of the year, really uh, filled with people. But being as how it's a rainy old day, not too many people about today. Do you have a lot of snakes? Um, there are some warning signs about snakes. There are snakes in the sand dunes, like that kind of area there would have the local snake called a jugite. Uh, which is poisonous. And this is snake season when the snakes are coming out of hibernation. So I can smell sausages and onions cooking in there. They've got a barbecue going. Smells absolutely delicious. There's the barbecue over there. Cooking up sausages and onions. Beautiful. For the young surf lifesavers who have just gone through their training drills. So we'll head down to the sundial, folks, and I'll show you that. It's interesting. Can you hear the rain on the umbrella? (laughs) Sounds pretty good to me. Great to have you along. If you're new to Periscope, click on the little person in the bottom right hand corner of your screen with the numbers next to them and you'll go straight to a map. If you're using an Android, click on the three dots at the bottom right hand corner of the screen and then click on broadcast details and you'll see uh, the map so you can get a good idea of where we are. If you've got an iPhone, you can pinch on the map to zoom out be able to see Perth and Fremantle. So there we are folks, that's Australia's largest sundial, working sundial in Cottesloe. It was a part of a competition that the town of Cottesloe um, conducted for a a piece of artwork down by the ocean here and uh, it didn't have to be a sundial, it was just a piece of artwork and a local architect um, designed this sundial which is based after uh, the largest sundial in the southern hemisphere at Jaipur in India. 
So it's actually a working sundial. It's pretty accurate. It's got adjustments for the time of year and stuff. Obviously, we can't use it today because of the, uh, the lack of sun. So on the left of screen is the PM side. For when the sun's over here, when the sun's setting, it casts a shadow over onto the PM side. See that wing there? That's got gradations on it uh, showing the hours from midday to uh, 6 p.m. And on the right of the screen is the AM um, dial. Looks like northeast Brazil without the sun, yeah. So when the sun's rising over here in the east, it casts a shadow over onto this um, western side of the dial on that, um, on that uh, wing there. I'll just show you, it's got the gradations. Um, you won't be able to see the time because of no sun. Here you go, there's uh, midday, 11 a.m., 10 a.m., 9 a.m., 8 a.m., 7 a.m. on the western side. And this is made of metal. Yeah, it's metal. And the, uh, the sundial itself, the main body of the sundial is limestone blocks local limestone. We've got a lot of limestone around the Perth metropolitan area. But it's a beauty. And here's the uh, PM side for when the sun's setting in the, in the west over there. Got the uh, PM side here casting the shadow. So 1 p.m., 2 p.m., 3 p.m., 4 p.m., 5 p.m., 6 p.m., 7 p.m. And like I say, it's metal. Nice. I'll take you for a walk through the actual sundial. Look at that. Pretty. I wonder if my umbrella will fit through. It only just fits through, folks. Look. <laughs> umbrella just scraping the edges of the uh, sundial. Nice bit of surf over the reef here today, but very few people out surfing. Look at that, pretty special. See the limestone blocks made out of this local limestone here. All our beaches contain a lot of limestone. There she is, Australia's largest working sundial. Not too bad, is it? It's great with the ocean in the background there. And there's the gorgeous Indian Ocean. one person surfing on a surf ski or maybe it's a stand-up paddle board I'm not sure the lone loneliness of the surfer the lone surfer there's been a fatal shark attack on this section of beach right here we're not locked down no we've had no community transmission of COVID for over for six months now so we're not on lockdown we're not required to wear masks. Look, wow, look at that. There's actually a, an osprey, an eagle, right here. Look at that. See the eagle on the right and the surfer on the left? That's an osprey there, just sitting on a rock there. That's pretty cool, I like that. surfer and a sea eagle. It's cool, isn't it? He looks a bit miserable, the sea eagle. Probably waiting for breakfast to swim by. I 
I was able to zoom in then because I'm balancing the umbrella on a fence post here. But I'll show you closer. It's a sea eagle, an osprey. Just waiting for a fish to swim by. And Victoria, the state of Victoria was in lockdown. Melbourne, the capital city of Victoria. But they've uh, just eased restrictions in Victoria um, in the last few days. So um, they're now, they're still required to wear masks. Um, and there's still restrictions on the number of people gathering and the number of visitors you can have in your house. But um, yeah, Victoria got hit quite bad, Melbourne specifically. That's nice with the sea eagle and the uh, surfer there. So folks, if you're new to my scopes, please click on this link. Oh, sorry, it didn't work for me. Let me try again. My fingers are wet, so it's not letting me um, scroll up on the screen. It won't let me do it. Let me try again. No. Nah. What's the temperature there? Temperature's around about um, 18 degrees Celsius the moment we got a nice ride on that one it's a nice uh, even break you can see two more surfers out to the right of screen there and you can see Fremantle Harbour in the background there with the Star Wars figures the dinosaurs there the, the cranes that lift the uh, containers off the ships that's Fremantle Harbour there busy working harbour designed by uh, C.Y. O'Connor. I showed you C.Y. O'Connor's uh, last resting place yesterday on my periscope where he committed suicide on C.Y. O'Connor Beach. So two surfers out there and one on a surf ski I think it is but it could be a stand-up paddleboard with the sea eagle looking on. Sea eagle's looking a bit miserable. I'm sure he'd be happy once he gets a fish uh, dropping by. So I like that shot with the sea eagle and the lone surfer. He's getting a good ride. Nice with Fremantle Harbour in the background there. Um, yeah, cold is relative. It feels cold to us, but uh, average winter temperatures around about 15 degrees Celsius. Um, it does get down to zero Celsius or freezing overnight, but only overnight, not like during the day. And we do get snow, but only on the mountains. We've got mountains down south and we get snow on the mountains, um, but doesn't snow in Perth. I'd love to see that sea eagle um, take off and catch a fish. That would be spectacular. Really nice watching this guy surfing. Here he goes, got a good wave. If you can get on this one, this will be a good ride.
you can see the two other surfers out on the right, top right hand corner of the screen. Yeah, I've driven all around Australia uh, three or four times. And when I was a student at uni, I hitchhiked uh, over onto the East Coast uh, many times during all the uh, university uh, breaks. Still got the sea eagle sitting there. Waiting for a fish to swim by for its breakfast. It's morning time here, Sunday morning, first day of November. I reckon it's around uh, 11.30, perhaps AM. Thank you for saying it's a nice scope. Uh, streams. He didn't get on that one. That's a big sea eagle there. That's uh, a good size. That's a mature um, adult. Always wanted to visit Hillsong Church in Sydney. Yeah, it's a very popular church, Hillsong. Popular all around the world, I think, the Hillsong movement. So the lone sea eagle hanging out on a limestone rock overlooking the Indian Ocean. Might be able to make out a ship out there waiting to come into Fremantle Harbour. That's a container ship waiting to come into Fremantle Harbour. Looks very uh, mysterious in the uh, in the in the rainy atmosphere. Ship waiting to come into Fremantle. So we're looking due west just to get you orientated. That's due west there. Yeah, the water's not looking its bluest today because there's no sun out because it's a rainy day. But the waters are unpolluted. It's the beautiful Indian Ocean. Love watching this sea eagle. Wonder why he's there all by himself. Uh, no, you can only own a gun if you're a farmer, if you've got uh, land in the country, or if you are in a gun club and they've got to be kept, uh, you know, totally locked up. Another surfer heading out here. So we've got two surfers now. Yeah, no, we've got strict gun controls. It's illegal to, you could, certainly can't open carry or carry a gun around. Um, you can only have it locked up and use it when you're in the firing range of a gun club or if you're a farmer to control uh, pests. Well, it makes you a lot safer. I feel very safe knowing that people around me are not carrying weapons. <laughs> so it's all perspective. I love it. No one's gonna come into our schools and shoot up our school children. Yep.
um, uh, sort of replica pistols, uh, uh, as long as they don't fire. There's a nice wave. Got a nice ride. I should get my kayak out and go for a ride myself. But criminals would have them. Um, well, we do, don't get shootings like you do in the USA. So, you know, I'm sure criminals do, but we just don't get shootings like you do. There's, there's no kind of murders by gun well, very few, you know. There was one recently or a year or so ago where, at on a farm where farmers are allowed to own guns and he shot and killed his family. But, uh, you know, there's no school shootings and stuff like that or mass shootings, you know, there's nothing like that. Because people just don't own guns. I know that's difficult to be you to understand in the USA, and I know you cherish your uh, First Amendment right. Is it a Second Second Amendment rights? But um, yeah, more shark attacks than gun deaths. Exactly, absolutely true. Uh, interesting. I'd like to see the statistics on that, since you've had several mass shootings in schools, etc. But that's probably true on a on a year by year basis. I'm not mounting an argument. I'm not sort of saying you guys should give up your guns. I'm just saying how it is here in Australia, and I'm really happy with the way it is in Australia. I feel really safe. And I know my children are safe when they're at school. And worshippers are safe when they're in their churches. Nice ride here if this guy can get onto it. Nah too slow. Oh, there goes the Osprey. Flying off. There he goes, folks. Bye-bye, Osprey. There he goes. G'day, Pedro. Good morning. Out here watching the surfers, Pedro, at Coslo on a rainy day. I'm standing under an umbrella. There's my umbrella standing under an umbrella, which I've got wedged uh, against this fence I'm leaning on. So that way I can use the zoom on my camera. You can hear the rain on the umbrella, that's great, yeah. <laughs> It's a beautiful country. Good morning, Pedro. How was your lunch yesterday at Scarborough, Pedro? Nice ride. Excellent as usual, fantastic. Scarborough Beach would have been looking a treat yesterday. Would have been a lot of people out on Halloween. 
found an article saying knives, hammers, hands and feet each kill more than rifles in the USA. I'm sure you can find an article on anything you want to back up any argument you want. But, uh, you know, I'm just saying that I feel very safe in Australia because I know that most people in Australia don't own weapons. Personally, what do you think of Donald Trump? Do you think Australia lost respect? Uh, America has become the laughing stock of the world. I know that's hard for you to understand. They're FBI stats, right? Uh, America's become the laughing stock, stock of the world, I've got to tell you. No, we find uh, your president to be an absolute joke. We have lots of cartoons and lots of uh, uh, comedians um, sending up the USA, whereas before we always looked to you as a big brother. But now I'm afraid to say you've become the laughing stock of the world. <laughs> the divided states of America, exactly. What do I think personally? I think that he's a narcissistic sociopath. There you are, but that's my political statement. Other than that, I don't think much about it because we have such a free and open and beautiful country here with reasonably sane politicians. I mean, reasonably sane. Thank you. But we look forward to next week when, um, when we can, you can get out and vote and uh, please all get out and vote and bring... And as for, ironically, I'm going to say, um, make America great again, like it was four years ago. Make America great again, like it was four years ago. Oh, well, we always thought, in, we in Australia always looked up to America as being like, kind of like our big brother. And we're still close allies. I'm not sure what you mean by that. Do you mean in Australia? We certainly have freedom of speech. Interesting comment. The election's about character. Yours, the voter. Interesting. Never will be, okay. Never was, never will be. <laughs> Pedro's uh, expressing his views. You mean great, Pedro. Wow. That's a big call. Wow. I personally was a huge supporter of uh, your first African-American president, uh, Barack Obama. I thought that he was such an eloquent speaker and uh, I know that he had his failings. Yeah, that's fine. I know you feel that way. Um, yeah, I'm not going to argue with you on a beautiful day like today. But I loved your uh, Barack Obama. I was so proud to be alive. Uh, yeah, I'm retired, yeah. I was so felt so fortunate to be alive to see um, uh, to see uh, your first African American president. I never thought I would see that happen in my lifetime. So it was fantastic for me, and I hope to be still alive when you have your first female president. That would be fantastic for me too to be part of history. And you may not realise, but having your first Black American um, president. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Having your first black American president was just a huge historical event. You know, you may not realise it because you live in America, but for the world it was a huge, huge event. Huge. And I'd love to be alive for your first female president. That would be fantastic. We still haven't had a female Prime Minister in Australia. In West Australia, we've had a female head of government. Our, our uh, Premier, uh, Carmen Lawrence, was our first female um, Premier, if I'm not mistaken. Pedro will correct me if that's not right.
Fair enough. I understand why you feel that. I don't agree, but we can agree to disagree and still be friends. Of course, John McCain was an absolute gentleman, a hero of America. All the people that worked with Obama loved him. But, you know, I'm not in the mood for an argument. I'm just really enjoying being out and about on a Sunday morning on All Saints Day, 1st of November. We've had our Halloween last night. Now it's All Saints Day. swing around and show you a bit of the environment. Got more surfers down this way. Uh, I've heard about it, yeah. So that's Fremantle Harbour down there. You can see the Star Wars figures there. The cranes that lift the uh, containers off the ships. And you can see the beautiful Norfolk Island pine trees that line all of our metropolitan coastline. All the way from Norfolk Island. See the cranes there? That's Fremantle Harbour, that's where I live. Busy working harbour designed by C.Y. O'Connor. I, I already have my, I already, I love Obama and I always will. And uh, have you ever been to New Guinea? I have. What do you think of the troubled and uh, impoverished um, neighbour? Uh, I think it's tragic what happens in Papua New Guinea, but New Guinea itself, Papua New Guinea itself is an amazing place to visit. Uh, my uncle is buried up there. He was killed in the Second World War. The uncle who I was named after, my name's Ian, and my uncle Ian was a uh, navigator on a bomber that was shot down over Rabaul in the Second World War. He was 19 years old. Think about it. He was 19 years old and he was a navigator on a Beaufort bomber in the Second World War and was shot down over Rabaul. So I visited his grave site. He was 19. 19. My uncle Ian, who I was named after. Yeah, but Papua New Guinea's got a lot of troubles. Um, you know, it used to be an Australian kind of, I guess you'd call it territory, and, uh, but I think since Australia uh, let it have its independence, it's, uh, it hasn't exactly flourished. But you know, there are good things happening in Papua New Guinea. Hi there, Mel. Thanks for joining. Yeah, fair call. Fair call. I'm not going to argue with you. I understand why you would think that. I'm just saying, in the last four years, we all laugh at America. The rest of the world is laughing at you. Is life better in New Zealand or Australia? Excellent question. In many ways, New Zealand is kind of more advanced than us, but in other ways, it's more uh, behind. Thanks for sh sharing and retweeting, Mel. Really appreciate it. Who cares? That's right. Right now, I don't care. I'm really happy in this beautiful uh, spot here, watching the surfers. Hope to see these guys get a bit of a ride.
Oh, guy out there getting a nice ride on his... Uh... Yeah, it's wet. It's wet like Sydney. Yeah, Mel. Yeah, we need the rain though. Unlike you guys, we haven't had our quota of rain for this year. We're well behind, so uh, we need the rain. Otherwise, we're gonna have water restrictions this summer, maybe. Um, I'm pretty hot, tired of hearing your rubbish, so um, yeah, you can watch and sit out the rest of the scope. Yeah, yeah, Mel, we definitely need ha need the rain. Have much of your media, a lot, a lot of media is controlled by Murdoch. Yeah, yeah, we, we haven't exactly got, uh, you know, free press here. The press is fairly biased, but it's not biased in the way I think some of the press in USA is. I mean, some of the papers are, but if you're selective, you know, there are really good journalists in Australia, just like, like there are really good journalists in America. But you have to be selective about what you read and know the credentials of the person that's writing the article that you're reading and know what their particular bias is so you can form your own impression. Yeah, there are sharks there, definitely. There's been a fatal shark attack on this very beach. Okay. Fair enough. Just be aware of the biases, I mean. There's bias in every news media, but you just have to, as long as you're aware of it and know the journalists, seek out journalists that you trust and admire, check their credentials, check their qualifications, Check their, their degrees and diplomas and uh, make up your own minds. There are definitely fantastic journalists all around the world, but you have to seek them out. This is Cottesloe Beach on the west coast of Australia. Click on the little person on the bottom right hand corner of the screen with the numbers next to him or her, and you'll see a map. If you haven't got the little person with the numbers, click on the three dots at the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, then click on uh, broadcast details. I've got the GPS on. You'll be able to see exactly where we are. If you've got an iPhone, you can pinch the map and zoom out, and you'll be able to see Perth and Fremantle, and then you can zoom right out and see the whole of Australia so you can get to get the idea. But this is the Indian Ocean at Cottesloe Beach, 20 kilometers to the west of Perth City, and Perth City is the capital city of West Australia. Okay, fair call. Yeah, it is beautiful with the rain. It's rained the whole time I've been scoping. That's, but there's no, not much wind to speak of, hardly any at all. Otherwise, I wouldn't be scoping. Um, you know, the, the lack of wind is the reason I decided to go for a walk in the rain, just to see what was happening on a Sunday morning, on All Saints Day, the day after Halloween. Pinch and a punch for the first of the month. Yeah, I do. I live 
in Fremantle, which is that uh, harbour town there with the cranes you can see in the background. And I live 500 metres from the beach. You're from Texas and missing your ocean as well. You've got beautiful ocean in Texas and you have lots of sharks just like we have. Yeah, so I'm in a good spot at the moment, folks, which is why I haven't moved, because I can uh, hold my phone and I, my, I'm hands-free. I can zoom in and out. Um, probably. I, I, uh, I have, not that I'm aware of, but uh, you have the uh, Gulf of Mexico here and there's lots of sharks, exactly. I saw a program on sharks in uh, Texas and I couldn't help noticing you've got some beautiful beaches with lots of sharks just like we do. Rain in Perth, how was Halloween? Excellent. It's not really a huge thing uh, around me, Halloween. It's, um, you know, it's pretty low key. I didn't get any trick or treaters coming to my house. Pedro probably did, cause he's got kids with him. Yeah, so a little earlier on, there was an osprey sitting on that rock right in front of the screen right at the moment. A uh, sea eagle that was amazing to watch. Aransas Corpus Christi and South Padre are your favorite spots. I'll look them up, thanks for the tip. Like I say, I watched a program on the Discovery Channel on uh, sharks in Texas and, uh, you know, I, there was, was a lot of similarities between the beaches in Texas and here and the number of sharks. G'day from Michigan. Hi, Michigan. How are you going? Happy Halloween to you. Although it's probably past midnight, is it, in... Um, but still Halloween for you, probably people out trick-or-treating. Or oh, you're not allowed to do that with, uh, with COVID. I forgot to ask, are there people trick-or-treating with masks on in the USA? If Trump wins on Tuesday, what will you think of America and Americans? Oh, I'd feel very sad for you. It's the captain of the Australian cricket team. Uh, is it Smith? I'm, uh, I'm not sure. It's a, you've, it's a, you've stumped me with that one. I'll have to let that go through to the keeper. Yeah, I'm not sure about your economy. I thought your economy was performing pretty well. But I'd worry about democracy. Uh, you know, it looks to me like you're about, you're witnessing a huge threat on democracy in the USA, which has always been a, fit, a defender of a democracy. And I think you're under a huge threat. The economy's not good, okay. I thought I heard that it was, um, that it was doing okay. You saw a big shadow, you may well have done. Yeah, but I worry about democracy in the USA. And like I say, ironically, America has always supported democracy throughout the world and has fought many, many wars uh, to protect democracy. Yeah, fair enough. I just think uh, there's a threat to your democracy. You're not closed down, so people are trick-or-treating. Trick or yeah, that's great to hear. Uh, I think I saw a couple of scopes um, where kids were out trick-or-treating. I know it's a huge thing in America. Mainly, strangely enough, because of your uh, uh, Irish population, because uh, Halloween was originally Irish, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, you had a lot of Irish immigrants uh, in the USA. Uh, <laughs> fair enough, yeah. But I mean, like I say, it's it's your problem, and you've got an, uh, you can go out and vote on uh, next week in a few days' time, and. You know, you know what to do.
Ireland started it all, yeah, but Ireland don't do trick or treating. <laughs> it's more of a kind of, it has religious connotations. And then especially today being Sunday is All Saints Day. So it's a big uh, Catholic uh, event in Ireland. I've got family in Ireland, so I know a little bit about it. All right, perhaps I should move on rather than staying in this one spot here. And if for people who have just joined, um, I'll show you the uh, Monday is All Souls. Yeah, it's, well, it's uh, isn't it? Isn't it today? I mean, first sun. It's All Souls Day today, isn't it? The first of November. That's Sunday here in Australia. Catholic. Yeah, I thought today was All Souls Day or All Saints Day. Sunday. The 1st of November. All Saints Day. All Saints Day's Monday, is it? Okay, I thought it was the 1st of November. I know it's All Saints Day today. That's Australia's largest working sundial, folks. Beautiful structure with the Indian Ocean in the background. November 2 is also... Thanks, Tamsin. I didn't know that. Huge company stocks like Boeing, Ford and others going down, so economy with the orange guy is not good. OK, thanks for telling me. I, uh, I was mistaken about that. I thought your economy had come out um, reasonably well. November 1 is All Saints Day and November 2 is All Souls Day. Thanks, Tamsin. I really appreciate you telling me that. Look, the Osprey is back. Let me... Uh, Anchor the umbrella so I can show you. He must have found some breakfast. The Osprey is back, folks. There he is. Beautiful Osprey, Sea Eagle. Catholic school education sticks with you. Yeah, that's right, Tamsin. Look at his wingspan, magnificent. Sea Eagle, folks. Let me just try and get my umbrella anchored. There you go, sea eagle, folks. Beautiful. With the uh, sundial. So sea eagle on the rock with the sundial. There he goes, flying off. Ah, oh, he didn't last long. Gone to get breakfast or lunch. So there you are, let's have a bit of a wander. Just adjusting my umbrella. So I can walk with you. Australia's largest working sundial. I don't know what Australia's largest non-working sundial is, but uh, this one's here. It was a competition by the town of Cottesloe and an architect designed this. It didn't have to be a sundial. This was a work of art to be placed overlooking the Indian Ocean and a local architect um, designed a sundial based on the uh, sundial in Jaipur in India. Look, my umbrella is uh, <laughs> exactly the same uh, diameter as the width of this uh, gap in the uh, sundial pointer, so you can hear it scraping on the uh, <laughs> scraping on the sides of the sundial. Oh, now I'm caught. <laughs> Cottesloe Sundale. It's won several awards. An architecture competition for the town of Cottesloe. Australian Bicentenary, it was celebrating 150 years since Australia was settled by Europeans. Jaipur, India is based on. The Maharaja in India. You can read that yourselves or take screenshots and read it afterwards. 
Jeff Cons Considine was the architect. And it's got instructions on how to read it um, uh, w with adjustments for the time of year. Shows you how to make the adjustment. There you go. How to read the Cottesloe sundial. So we'll walk back up to Cottesloe Beach proper now and I'll show you this uh, beautiful grassy areas up here. There might be a few local native par parrots about. Still out in bare feet, folks. A little bit rough on my feet on this uh, pathway, but not too bad. Just got to make a wardrobe adjustment with my shorts falling down. So bear with me. G'day. So it's a dual pathway for walkers or runners and cyclists. And the Cottesloe golf course in the background there. If you have a look at the map, you'll be able to see it. Cottesloe golf course. Some of the beautiful uh, native plants around here. If Michael Oud was here, he'd be able to tell us what these were. I'm not sure myself. <coughs> And I'll take you around to this meeting place around the corner here where there's a beautiful um, mosaic. Look at this beautiful hardened verdure, the native happy wanderer or gypsy wanderer, hardened verdure, the purple flowers, lovely. And looky here, we have a dolphin. Beautiful dolphin with the Indian Ocean in the background there. Nice. It's pretty. Lots of dolphins out there in the Indian Ocean. See them often. But look at this area here. It's like a meeting place, circular meeting place. And it's got this amazing mosaic made of bits and pieces of pottery and tile, broken tiles and glass and stuff. It's in the shape of a, you know, a shell, like a, um, 
like a uh, an abalone shell I think if you see it like that see the uh, spiral like an abalone shell or a conifer if that's what they're called you know the spiral shells I mean but it's got amazing colors in it I really like it it's beautiful It's a great mosaic. I hope you agree. Just walk around and show you these um, beautiful mosaic pieces of broken pottery and glass and stuff as I walk in the water it's almost like turtle shells these um, sections of the mosaic a bit like turtle shells hello Chris Cross thanks for joining just showing you this magnificent um, mosaic here. Multimedia mosaic. I hope you can see it's like a like a seashell. Hello Simon, good morning. Thanks for coming along. Lovely to see you. It's a fantastic um, mosaic. Can you see it that it's in the shape of a shell? I'm sure you know the type of shell I mean. Uh, we have local abalone that are in the same um, same shape as that, the, the sort of conical. You're welcome, Chris Cross. Great to see you, Simon. Must be early morning for you. Although, probably, what is it about? For Nautilus, yeah, like a Nautilus shell but also similar to the abalone shell and different types of cone shells. But yeah, the same as a, a Nautilus, Simon, you're absolutely right. That beautiful, the Nautilus is generally has that blue color, I think from memory. It's pretty, isn't it? A magnificent mosaic. You love the two textures, yeah, textures, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, a real multimedia artwork. It's got pieces of broken tiles, broken pottery, broken glass, uh, river rocks, and uh, looks like uh, the, the coloured rocks in the centre there are like uh, a local 2J stone. 2J is a place in West Australia that has coloured rock like that naturally. It's spelt T double O D J A Y. That's it, that's it, Simon. That's it. If you look up 2J stone, that I'm pretty sure that there is 2J stone. It's uh, quite a colourful uh, rock that occurs naturally at Kuji, right? at 2J. <laughs> 2J, a funny word. I think it's an Aboriginal word. Not too sure what it means, though. Maybe it means coloured rocks, like that. You knew a guy that lived there, Simon. Wonderful. Simon's an expat Australian living in Woking in England, and he knows a lot about West Australia. I, I really wouldn't have... If, you had a, if, I had, if I had had a bet, I would have bet you had never, never heard of 2J, Simon. So you, you continue to impress me, Simon, with your uh, encyclopedic knowledge. Thank you. Thanks for inviting followers, Simon. Really appreciate it. Really wonderful. Yeah, it's a funny name, isn't it, Simon? Yeah. <laughs> but I love that. It's like a, an Aboriginal meeting place here. You can see it's a, a, a literally a meeting place with uh, bench seating, all, you know, made of rock, of course, all the way around. And uh, just uh, the whole meeting place, the surface of the sort of vaguely uh, 
circular meeting place is this mosaic, which is just wonderful. Having a nice time out in the rain, Simon. I'm really enjoying the rain. I'm just uh, holding my umbrella and uh, walking around showing Cottesloe in the rain because I thought it was really unusual. It's great because there's not much wind, otherwise I wouldn't be able to scope, Simon. So yeah, Simon says it's like a nautilus shell. It is definitely like a nautilus shell. But I'll go down to the beach and see if I can show you some of the abalone shell that it reminds me of. So bear that image in mind, folks. See the way that spiral shell there, the spiral starting in a tight spiral in the center and then radiating out to a, a larger spiral. Um, bear that in mind as we go down to the beach because I want to try and find uh, an abalone shell to show you um, what I'm talking about that it reminds me of. I doubt I'll be able to find Simon a Nautilus shell because they're pretty, uh, pretty rare. I have got a couple at home though. They are extremely pretty. And this is my favorite little hobbit path here. Look here, look at the little hobbit path. We'll take it down. I might have to take my umbrella down. I'll put my umbrella in front, but it's like a hobbit path. I always feel like Gandalf, Gandalf when I'm walking through here from Lord of the Lord of the Flies, I mean Lord of the Rings, not Lord of the Flies. Look, I had to put my umbrella down because it won't fit through. <laughs> it's the canopy, yeah, yeah. It's too narrow for my umbrella. Up it goes, the umbrella. And I go to show you this sign here, the surf, slightly different Lord. Yeah, yeah, the slightly different Lord, exactly. <laughs> well pointed out, Simon. Both lords, but slightly different. If you haven't read or seen the movie of Lord of the Flies, please do. It's uh, a very amazing story, based on a true story. The Surfer's Code, folks. Shh. I'll just let you read it yourself, because I'm uh, not a surfer, not a board surfer, so I don't know all the different uh, thingos. So that's the right of way. Do not, there's a do not. And then right of way, surfers have the right of way. Paddling out. Remember to communicate. Always coupler. Danger. Surf within your ability and respect the other wave and beach users. Town of Cottesloe, folks. Look at this. Here's the giant steps going down to the ocean and a little willy wagtail there. I can't zoom in on him because I'm holding my umbrella. Let's go down the giant steps here. Sorry, the camera will be very jerky because these are giant steps. They're like twice the size of normal steps, twice the height. So they're quite, you have to sort of <laughs> climb down like a child <laughs> climbs down steps in a crab-like fashion. <laughs> no, it's, it's not really dangerous, Simon. It's just, uh, I have to walk it in the way you've seen one of your kids would walk, particularly your youngest kid. I'm walking like a toddler down the stairs, kind of crabbing it. Because <laughs> you can't just walk normally on them. They're too... Uh, too, uh, yeah, too large. So I've crabbed all the way down these steps now. I call it the giant stairway. I don't know. <laughs> and let's check out the surfers down here. Your kids would jump down each one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I love this little rocky beach here. Pretty, isn't it?
the limestone cliffs here. Local limestone, the, that uh, sundial. Uh, Simon, I'm not sure, I haven't checked. Um, uh, I have seen the tide higher than it is, but uh, I didn't check the tide. Um, Pedro, it looks like Pedro's not still here, otherwise he would be able to tell us. Pedro knows all, all about the uh, maritime issues because Pedro w is a skipper and was uh, a ferry boat skipper. Is there ever a sandy beach here? Excellent question. I've never seen a sandy beach, but regarding low and high tide, I've seen the tide up to about here, this mark here, and you can see the seaweed there. So um, seaweed has been deposited all the way up here. So I'm guessing that it's kind of relatively low tide. So I'm looking for a shell that will remind you of um, that mosaic. I'm looking in amongst the flotsam and jetsam. Show us Rottnest Island. Uh, it's obscured. You can't see it um, because uh, of the rain. But I'll try and zoom in because there's a sailboat out there, the Lewin. The Lewin sail. I'm trying to zoom. I'm, it's hard when I'm holding my umbrella to zoom. See the sailboat out there with another ship? That's the Lewin, a sail training ship. It hasn't got its sails up because there's not enough wind. Yeah, you see two. The one on the left is a ship or a boat. It's under steam, looks like it's moving. And the one on the right is the Lewin, uh, the sail, sail training boat. All I see are masts. Yeah, that's right. It hasn't got the sails up because there's no wind, which is why I'm down here. If it was windy, I wouldn't be scoping because the rain would be blowing in my face. But I figured because there was very little wind, almost no wind, that uh, it'd be great for scoping. And it turned out to be wonderful. I've had a wonderful scope. I've really enjoyed it. Simon, we started off, there was a surf life saving event at, um, at Cottesloe Beach over the, the other side of the rocks there. This is South Cottesloe here. And then as we walked down to the uh, sundial, Australia, Australia's largest working sundial, as opposed to Australia's largest non-working sundial, uh, we saw an osprey sitting on the rock, a beautiful osprey, a really large, mature osprey, sea eagle. So that was wonderful. So I'm looking amongst the flotsam and jetsam here, folks. You can see all kind of interesting things. That there is cuttlefish. If you look up cuttlefish, C-U-T-T-L-E, it has a backbone or cartilage like that. And there's these kind of spiral shells. See that one there? Spirals. I don't see any of the shells that I'm actually looking for. It would be amazing if we found a nautilus in amongst all the flotsam and jetsam. Known in this scope as cuttlefish. That's right, exactly so. Show us debris from the Malaysian airline. I can. There's a seat from the Malaysian airline. There, right there is a seat from the Malaysian airline. And look, even items of clothing from the Malaysian airline. So there you go, folks. You've got everything on this scope. The first class seat, absolutely. That's first class seat from the Malaysian airline. That's exactly it. That's the captain's chair. <laughs> it's definitely the captain's chair. <laughs> the captain's chair. You guys are so funny. Thanks for making me laugh. That's perfect. Definitely the captain's chair. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. <laughs> I mean, it's not funny, but it is funny. We'd be just as likely find a mermaid as a nautilus shell. That's right, Simon. <laughs> 
Simon, just on your uh, our texts uh, on our, our messages on Twitter, I've just got to talk to Simon for a moment because I was in hospital on si- on Friday, and Simon was uh, expressing concern and was so generous in reaching out and finding out how I was. Simon, I feel absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, no, Simon, that's absolutely fine. Fine. Simon, they gave me a, an intravenous iron infusion. So they gave me a pint of liquid iron and it made me feel... The next morning I woke up and I felt better than I'd felt for like three months. Iron Man, yeah. And I'm now wearing my underpants on the outside of my pants because I feel that good. They gave me a pint of liquid iron direct into my vein and it, I'm now wearing my underpants on the outside of my pants. So thanks to Simon for reaching out. I had uh, unexplained um, uh, anemia, folks. So, uh, <laughs> oh, and Simon, you've got the same condition as me. Uh, no, no, only on the outside, Simon. I'm going commando on the inside. I feel that good. So definitely wearing the underpants on the... I haven't got those yet, Simon. Haven't got those yet, so no. And, uh, but uh, Simon, because you've got the same condition, just look up, look up, just may, if you've got a pencil, write it down. Uh, it's called um, uh, Cameron, Cameron lesions. Cameron, K- C-A-M-E-R-O-N lesions, L-E-S-I-O-N-S, Cameron lesions. That's what I've got, and that causes anemia. And it will cause anemia in you when in many, many years, in many, many years' time, Simon, I know it seems impossible to imagine, but one day you will turn 60 and you need to be aware of Cameron lesions because they're the principal cause of uh, anemia in people with our condition, i.e. the HH. The HH. <laughs> Not the full stop, the HH. Cameron lesions. And that's what I had, and it was beautifully discovered by my enterologist. He showed me photos of them, so I've got screenshots of my Cameron lesions. Yeah, but it only affects you when you're about 60, Simon. So I know you've got a many, many years to go, but it's well worth uh, keeping that in mind. Set it on your iPhone clock for uh, 25 years' time and, uh, yeah, and go and see an enterologist and ask him to check it out. A pint of iron would kill an elephant. Well, that's why I'm wearing my underpants on the outside of my pants, folks. That's it. That's it. I'm feeling that good. I can't sleep. It's daytime here. It's probably midday by now. (laughs) Or you can't sleep. But you're asking a question. You're asking if I can't sleep. I don't normally sleep in the daytime. It's daytime here. Look, the sundial. We've just been up at the sundial. (laughs) Oh, Simon can't sleep. Right. Simon's an early riser. He gets up at 4.30 a.m., which is probably, it's probably about 4 a.m., is it, Simon, for you? Maybe 5 a.m.? So I thought I'd be able to find a, um, an abalone shell. There's usually lots of them down here, but typically I can't find them, and I'm wearing bare feet. What's the temperature there at the beach? It's about 18 degrees Celsius. I'm wearing bare feet, so I can't walk out on these rocks very much because there's bound to be um, some of those shells. I'll try and walk a little bit, but it's pretty sharp on the rocks. Asking Simon. Thanks, Mary. Sorry, Mary. I thought you were asking me. Look, I'm like a little boy when it comes to these um, tidal rock pools. Look at the treasures in there. That's a real treasure trove in there. And I see lots of shells, but not the ones that I'm looking for. The boys took over the bed with my wife, so you can't stay asleep. (laughs) I'm just gonna focus on some of the beautiful treasures here that I see, because I become like a little boy when I'm at a spot like this. 
So it's rained for the whole time I've been scoping. Fed up about the lockdown. Yeah, sorry about that, Mary. I know um, you're back in lockdown. I know that's absolutely dreadful. My heart goes out to you. Can't believe I can't see a single abalone shell. Just walking very carefully, folks, because I've got bare feet and it's pretty rough on these rocks here. Ah, and last time I was down here, I was asking people about um, the holes in the... See these perfectly symmetrical holes in the rocks here? And as you go further over there, it becomes even more apparent. Well, someone told me they're old tree trunks, and that makes absolute sense. Apparently they're old... Uh, yeah, maybe, Simon, I think, when, it's, when the interior is polished, yeah. Apparently these are old tree trunks, which makes absolute sense. That's why they're symmetrical. Apparently old tree trunks. So that, that explained that mystery to me. It, it looks like a moonscape down here. There's all these symmetrical holes. And someone suggested they were old tree trunks. And it kind of makes sense to me. <clears throat> Just got to do a wardrobe uh, adjustment again, folks. My shorts keep falling down. <laughs> I think I've lost weight over the last few weeks because I haven't felt well. Um, and uh, my shorts keep falling down. <laughs> but it's all good. Underpants need to be tighter, that's right, yeah. Yeah, I had to wear the loose undies so I could get them on the outside of my pants. There's got to be an abalone shell down here. There's normally hundreds of them. I can see lots of other shells. Here, pants means underpants. Is that right? Okay, yeah, so you wear trousers. So I'm wearing my pants on the outside of my trousers then in your language. Look, that's cuttlefish, known on this scope as cuttlefish. So we can cuddle with the cuttlefish. That's the um, that's the uh, backbone or cartilage of the cuttlefish or cuttlefish as we call them here. I'll just have a cuddle with the cuttlefish. See, it's got this hard um, surface here, which I guess is for protection and underneath it's very porous and you feed it to your parrots or your budgerigars. It's wonderful, they love to chew on it. It's probably high in calcium or something like that, which is good for them too. So that's the backbone of the cuttlefish. If you look it up, C-U-T-T-L-E. Um, known on this scope as cuttlefish. We like to cuddle them. And someone was calling them cuttlefish, which was absolutely wonderful. Look, I can see an abalone shell or what looks like one, but I've got to walk over these rocks to get there, so just bear with me, because these are sharp. Oh! Oh! Just bear with me, folks. I'm on a mission. I've got to show a shell that I think looks like the mural that I just showed you, that I asked you to commit to memory. Look, there it is right there. Hang on, can I get it on screen? Where is it? See it? Right there. Now that reminds me of the mural. Does anyone agree? 
See the spiral? Thanks, Simon. That reminds me of the uh, mural that we saw. And I don't think that's actually an abalone shell. I think it's a like a cone shell, like a, a cone shell, hang on. It's embedded in the rock, so I can't, um, I can't sort of pick it up. But uh, I'm glad I found that. It was worth uh, tearing my feet to shreds in order to uh, show you. I haven't got my shoes with me. I left them in the car. Yeah, it's like a fossil. It's, um, well, it's, it's been calcified. You know, it's, been, it's part of it. You can see all these shells here are now like part of the rock. Um, there's another one there, see? They're all sort of embedded in the rock. They're, they're being calcified rather than petrified. So I guess you'd call them fossils. I'm not sure if they qualify as fossils because generally you think of fossils as being like thousands or even million years old. But um, these are probably possibly only, you know, 50 years old. But just with the limestone leaping out of the... Yeah, you're welcome, Simon. <laughs> Uh, anything for you, Simon. Uh, with with the limestone, the lime leaching out of these rocks here, um, it kind of calcifies them. I think that's the term, calcification. You can see here, same. They're like fossils on the way to fossilization. Yeah, they're like fossils. A bit like me. I'm an old fossil. <laughs> They're definitely like fossils, and there's a couple there that are, um, you know, they sort of have become part of the rock because it's limestone rock and limestone uh, leaches lime, uh, which is a basis of cement. They put lime in cement. Look at the landscape here, though. It's like a moonscape. And I've always wondered what these symmetrical holes were everywhere. And someone suggested they were tree trunks originally. <laughs> Maybe calcified. I've definitely got calcification of the artery, Simon. <laughs> so someone told me that these used to be tree trunks and that makes perfect sense. That there would have been like a forest here of small trees that have left these um, circular holes. I'll just show you here here's another one of those shells but from the reverse side so you can't actually see how it looks like the um looks like the uh, mural that i showed you but bear with me folks i'm walking back onto the trying to get back to the sand so as i still can walk this afternoon <laughs> walking on the seaweed hi from brazil hola you're still suffering really badly in Brazil. I'm sorry for you with COVID. So there's the, the downstairs view of the um, Cottesloe sundial. It's looking pretty nice. And I must have been scoping for an hour and it's rained the whole time, which is wonderful. We need the rain. I'm just going to sit on this rock here for a moment. Balance my umbrella and see if I can see, um, see if I can zoom in on my phone. 1.53, wow Simon, that's a long time to be scoping. Time flies, yes. So there's the sundial there. And this morning there was an osprey on that rock. Just to the left of the sundial, you can see a pointy rock. There, the osprey was sitting on that rock there. It was a large mature adult osprey. It was wonderful to see. Still that limestone there, that's, um, that's what the sundial is built out of. Thanks for inviting followers. Uh, deep blue really appreciate it see if we can see um, a bit of surfing action here 
quite a nice gentle wave. Normally this is where learner surfers, beginner surfers go um, to surf. Yes, I've been to the UK and Ireland. Yeah, I've been to the UK uh, three times and a couple of times to Ireland. I've got uh, family in Ireland, in Limerick and Galway and Dublin. See the ship in the background that's waiting to come into Fremantle Harbour. It's anchored in what's called Gage Roads, G-A-G-E, Gage Roads. It's a deep water channel um, that leads into Fremantle Harbour. Hope you can hear the pleasant rain falling on the umbrella. It's always nice. We really need the rain, like I was saying. Uh, we've had a fairly dry winter. Rain on the umbrella is a lovely sound, isn't it? Yeah. I want to see one of these guys catch a wave. So we're looking due west at the moment, folks, just to get you orientated, that's due west. And I'll zoom out so I can spin around and show you. That's due west out to Rottnest Island and South Africa. Love that cloud formation there. Swinging around to the south, and that's Fremantle down there, Fremantle Harbour. See if I can zoom in while balancing my umbrella. See the uh, Star Wars figures, the cranes that lift the containers off the ships in Fremantle Harbour. That's Fremantle Harbour there, due south. I can't spin around to the east because uh, I've got my umbrella there. So you have to imagine, yeah, it's a great landscape, isn't it? Uh, to the left of screen is due east, directly to the left, and Perth City's up there inland 20 kilometres. And at Fremantle there, which you can see, that's also the mouth of the Swan River. Um, so the Swan River goes, well, from east of Perth uh, all the way through our beautiful Swan Valley, the uh, beautiful wine growing region, and meanders down past Perth City, which is 20 kilometres upstream on the Swan River, and then empties into the Indian Ocean right here at Fremantle there, where the Star Wars figures are. That empties into the, where the Swan River empties into the Indian Ocean. Look at the clouds. The clouds are great today. Lovely to have a bit of rain. We've had very little over winter. I love that pattern there, the cloud with the surf. Swinging around. And that's due north up there. So Scarborough Beach is up there about uh, five or seven k's. Uh, where I scoped from a few days ago. And Indonesia is directly up there, probably four or five thousand kilometres. Our closest neighbour in West Australia is Indonesia, the largest Muslim country in the world. I mean, the largest Muslim population, populated country in the world. So that's our closest neighbour. So I think I should start heading back to my car. So I'm going to um, wander on and I'll keep scoping while I'm wandering back to my car. Hang on, just got to swap hands to hold the umbrella in my comfortable hand. Should be using my umbrella as a walking stick on this unstable ground here. Look, some like a tile, like a roofing tile or piece of pottery that's been washed up. 
interesting pattern on it. hope you can hear the sound of the surf hitting the rocks. It's such a magical sound. Bello dia. Hola. Going back to the captain's chair of the missing Malaysian Airlines. Here we are, the captain's chair, folks. And I think the captain's socks, or possibly his underpants, I'm not sure. Sleeping, are you? Okay. Or oh, the water, the sound of the water, you're saying, Akwi. Yes, the sound of the water puts you to sleep. That's the way I'm interpreting that anyway. <laughs> You might have been abusing me. <laughs> Just let me adjust the trousers again, folks. My shorts are falling down. I've lost too much weight. Which is not a bad thing to have. So now I can eat whatever I like, at least for a few weeks. <laughs> if in doubt, assume the best. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Look, more, more, uh, more stuff from the missing Malaysians. Someone's underpants. Bonds. Beautiful. Look at that. It's magical. See Fremantle in the background there? I can't zoom in this time because I'm holding my umbrella. But very pretty, folks. Thanks for those beautiful hearts. Really appreciate it. It's lovely. Okay, I'm walking back up the giant stairs. I'll have to try Simon's children's technique of jumping. No. Actually, it's easier going up than going down. Much easier. Back up the uh, Hobbit path. Hobbit path, dragging my umbrella as I go. How's the canopy, folks? It's great, isn't it? I feel like Gandalf when I'm walking through here. Sorry about the umbrella getting in the way. That's a nice little Halloween path, if you're still in Halloween. Halloween. Look, dolphin. hear the umbrella dragging on the canopy. So there's the uh, Cotteso golf course there. 
Simon's putting up dolphin emojis. That's the Cottesloe Golf Course. Try and zoom in for you while balancing my umbrella. That's the clubhouse for the Cottesloe Golf Club. See the green there, someone there on the green. About to tee off maybe. Maybe they're in a bunker. So like I say, if you click on the little person on the bottom right hand corner of your screen, you'll go straight to a map. That's it, Simon. You go straight to a map if you click on the little Lord of the Rings, the King's Return movie is the Hobbit scene. Cool. Fantastic for letting me know, Chris, Christo. Thanks for that. Look, uh, one of our native plants here, hardened verdure, beautiful purple flower. And this is the main strip of Cottesloe Beach. I'm just walking back to my car at the moment, folks. That's what I'm doing. Oh, with my foot. Hello, foot. There's me, an effigy of me. Cottesloe Surf Life Saving Club. New members welcome. Feel free to join up, folks. And I'm going to walk on the grass away from the road so you can see the beautiful grassy areas of Cottesloe Beach. Here's one of my favourite trees, the she oaks. I don't know where the he oaks are, but that's a she oak or a casuarina, I believe, as Michael Aud has pointed out to me. She oak. Hello there, Langfrans. Thanks for joining. Back down. You're from the Netherlands. Hello, Netherlands. I've been to the Netherlands. Um, Spent a little bit of time in Amsterdam and did a bit of travelling around. So the gorgeous Cottesloe Beach area here folks with the uh, shark barrier around here. Here it's five o'clock, yes, yes. That means it must be 1pm 1, uh, 1 here I would say. I think we're eight hours ahead of you, possibly seven. Uh, I think, uh, well, we're 12 hours ahead of um, New York time. So if you know New York time, we're 12 hours ahead. So um, I think it's 1 p.m. maybe. It's either midday or 1 p.m. We're either at seven hours ahead of uh, the Netherlands or eight hours ahead. I'm not too sure. Yeah, basically midday, lunchtime. <laughs> So the Cottesloe Beach here, the Cottesloe Groin. Not many people on the beach right now. There was a, quite a lot of people earlier on because the Surf Lifesavers were had an event on. I walked down past the Cottesloe Surf Life Saving Club. That's that beautiful building there. And show you, if it's open, show you all their uh, boats and surf craft. Sorry, I have to keep adjusting my shorts, which want to fall off. Don't want to be exposing my bum on Cottesloe Beach. There we go. And every year in uh, February, uh, we have um, what's called Sculpture by the Sea. And that's one of the sculptures you can see there. 
That's one that they left behind that the town of Cottesloe bought or was donated to the town of Cottesloe. It's a massive event. It uh, attracts sculpture, sculptors from all over the world. And that's one that was left behind. It's not bad though, is it? Probably looks better from the other side with the ocean in the background. It's 1 a.m. there, so it's 1 p.m. here. 1 p.m. here now. A couple of the surf life saving guys out there on their paddle boards. Where am I? I'm at Cottesloe. If you see the little person in the bottom right hand corner of your screen with the numbers next to it, uh, click on that, you'll go straight to a map. If you haven't got that, then click on the three dots at the bottom right hand corner of the screen and then click on broadcast details and you'll see a map. I've got the GPS on so you can see exactly where I am, west coast of Australia. Hello. Is it okay if I show folks your surf crafts? Thank you very much. Hello. So colorful in here, I love it. Look at this, folks. Beautiful surf skis, surf paddle boards. Inside the heart of the Cottesloe Surf Life Saving Club. The folks here with their vehicle, keeping an eye on things. I just love it in here because it's so colourful, you know? So much colour. And then they've got their long boats. Their surf, surf boats and their surf skis. Cottesloe, Western Australia. Look, I'm under shelter here so I can put my umbrella down for the first time since I started scoping. So wonderful. All right, folks, I think that's where I'm gonna leave you. So thanks so much for joining. Thanks for tapping those beautiful hearts. Thanks for inviting your friends and followers. And thanks for each and every comment you make because it's the comments that make Periscope really interesting. It's the interaction with you guys. So uh, are there lifeguards behind you? Yes, the lifeguards are right there. Keeping an eye on the beach. Here's the beach here. And I'll just show you before I go the shark net. That's the shark barrier there. Hello from America. Thanks, Simon. Really appreciate you joining, Simon and inviting your friends. I will see you soon, Simon. That's the shark barrier there, going out to the Cottesloe Pylon, a famous landmark down here, and swinging around. The shark net goes all the way around, out to the Cottesloe groin there. So there's a protected area there. And there's a lifeguard coming out of the water there, doing training and one in the water there on a surf ski or a paddle board of some kind. Is the net effective? Yes. There's never been a shark attack inside the net. Or for that matter, there's never been a shark inside the net. And the surf life savers there doing their job. Wonderful job, always in the red and yellow. That's the colors of Surf Life Saving Australia. So that's where I'm just gonna, if I can get that in. No, I can't get it in. I'll just do it this way. So there you go. Thanks so much, everyone. Love you a long time, and I'll see you again next time. Bye for now.